हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट अप मिलिंग एंड डाउन मिलिंग सो एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर देर आर डिफरेंट फीडिंग सिस्टम्स आर अवेलेबल दैट हाउ वन कैन फीड वन पीस एंड टेबल सो दीज आर द मेन टू मेथड्स दैट इज फर्स्ट वन इज अप मिलिंग एंड सेकेंड वन इज द डाउन मिलिंग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट एस हैवे लुक एट सिंपल टू डी फिगर ऑफ दिस अप मिलिंग एंड डाउन मिलिंग so first of all this first figure shown over here indicates up milling similarly this second figure shown over here indicates down milling so now as one can see from the figure first of all in this figure the movement of work piece that is from leftward to rightward direction whereas the rotation of cutter that is the clockwise direction or as we can say the cutter is rotating in opposite direction to that of the movement of the work piece whereas in down milling as you can see work piece is moving towards from right hand side towards the left hand side and this cutter is rotating similarly in clockwise direction and now as one can see this cutter and work piece both are rotating in the similar direction so this is the first major and most important difference between this up milling and down milling again the first major difference between this up milling and down milling is in up milling cutter is rotating in opposite direction to that of the work piece movement whereas as you can see from this figure 2 in down milling cutter is moving in similar direction to that of the work piece so this is the first major difference now second let us have a look now when the cutter is rotating in up milling direction what happens this particular section shows the removal of material and as one can see chip is removed in this particular form now in similarly look at this down milling over here also material is removing and material starts removing from this top section whereas over here material starts removing from this bottom section so over here the chip forms like the same so on over here so chip is formed like this so now if we say another difference between this up milling and down milling we can say that in the case of up milling first of all chip thickness is minimum and it starts increasing up to the end of the operation similarly in the case of down milling at the starting portion chip thickness is maximum and at the end of cutting or at the end of this chip removal chip thickness becomes minimum so this is the second difference between up milling and down milling now as we can see in the case of up milling material removal at the beginning is minimum and material removal at the end that is the maximum we can see from this both chip and so we can say that in the case of up milling during machining operation force is required and power required that is minimum at the beginning so force is and power required that are minimum or less at the beginning and tends to maximum at the end of machining operation now as we can see over here in down milling chip thickness that is removed is maximum at the starting and it is minimum at its end that means we can say that in the case of down milling to perform the machining operation at the beginning 
forces and power required that are maximum at the starting machining operation and it tends to become minimum at the end of the chip removal or at the end of the chip removal. So if we say between the up milling and down milling which point is convenient to have maximum force at beginning or to have maximum force at the end or if we say if we start machining operation it is suitable to have maximum power requirement at the beginning or it is suitable to have minimum power requirement at the beginning so our answer is very common during machining operation at the starting time if the forces and power requirement are minimum then machining operation performed becomes easy so due to this we can say that in the case of up milling forces and power required are minimum whereas in the case of down milling forces and power required are maximum at the beginning of the process and due to this particular reason of this forces and power required which is minimum and which is nearly about the conventional process so this up milling is also known as conventional milling process so this up milling is also known as conventional milling process so now similarly in the case of down milling forces and power required are minimum and due to this another name for this down milling it is called as the climb milling so up milling is similarly also known as conventional milling whereas down milling is also known as the climb milling so these are the basic difference between this up milling and down milling now let us have a look at other parameters which differentiate this up milling and down milling process now as one can see in this up milling process this cutter moves from bottom sections towards the upward section and due to this there are chances that this cutter tends to lift the workpiece in the upward direction and due to this reason proper clamping and fixture required during up milling process similarly if you can see these forces that are acting on the workpiece are in the downward direction and due to this it provides this cutter provides one type of fixture or steadiness to the workpiece and due to this there are no major requirement of the clamping or fixture that are required so this is another difference between this up milling and down milling now similarly if one can see as we have discussed in the case of up milling up milling process tends to lift the workpiece so due to this there might be a chances of the vibration and due to this this up milling process result into wavy surface at the end of the machining process whereas in the down milling process the surface finish that is required or that is generated or obtained which is far more better than this up milling process so as a surface finish point of view down milling provides better surface finish than the up milling process so these are the different aspects of this up milling process and down milling process again i am saying that up milling and down milling are also known as conventional milling and climb milling respectively so this question is also most and most important as an G2 examination point of view in which they can ask us differentiate between up milling and down milling process. In certain cases they may also ask us explain up milling process in detail or explain down milling process in detail. So in many different ways this question can be asked and for this you just only need to draw this figure for the case of up milling draw this first figure and for the case of down milling draw this second figure and by drawing this figure you can simply just write out different points that we have discussed during this session now 
As we have completed our discussion between this up milling and down milling and we come across major two parts that is during machining operation different work holding devices are also required. So now let us have a discussion about different work holding devices. So there are many number of work holding devices available based on the different shape of the parts available. So from this first work holding device that is the T bolt and clamps and these are majorly used in many of the machineries at the bed section and these are used actually to restrict the axial movement of the workpiece on the bed. So these T bolts and our clamps are mostly used for rectangular or we can say it's a flat or horizontal work pieces which needs to be fixed during machining operation on the bed section of the machine. Now second one that are the angle plates. These angle plates have designed something like we draw over here. So these are the angle plates which are fixed to the machine and these angle plates are used when any of the workpiece needs to be fixed perpendicular to the other component or other part. So these angle plates are used to fix the workpiece at perpendicular compared to the other component. Now third one that are the V blocks. Now in the case of V blocks let us have a look at this figure. So up to now we have discussed about the flat work pieces or some, some of the work pieces which needs to be fixed at perpendicular location but now if one want to fix circular work pieces then how one can fix these work pieces so for that these V blocks are used and as one can see on these V blocks or this V section circular work pieces can be fixed and these work pieces are attached properly during machining operation. So in most of the cases these V blocks are used to hold circular work pieces during the machining operation. Now fourth one that are the vice and these vice are used to fix properly work pieces on any of the machinery and if one want to fix machine at different location and of different shape and size then these vice are used and these vice have many number of parts or many number of types such as it may be a bench vice it may be a screw type vice so different types of vice are available which are used to hold the workpiece which have different shape, different shape and size so to accommodate or to arrange the different shape and size of the workpiece to fix them properly on the machineries these different types of vice are used so these are the major four different work holding devices which are mostly used first one is the T bolt and clamp second one is angle plate third one is V block and fourth one are the vices so in this lecture we have discussed about the major two methods which are used to fit the workpiece and table or we can say as the workpiece and cutter during machining operation these are the up milling and down milling process second we have discussed about work holding devices so i hope these two topics are clear to you if you have any query further repeat this question or repeat this topic that's why it is easy to understand for you so in next lecture we will continue towards our further topic in this milling machine chapter so looking forward to see you all in our next lecture up to then thank you